Welcome back friends. In today's video, I will be discussing a documentation tool that comes with Symfony. So today I will explore on Nelmio API doc bundle. So the final goal of this video is to give you a brief idea on using this Nelmio API bundle. API doc bundle with your Symfony application. So this doc bundle is basically used to document document your Rust API endpoints and use a sandbox like view to perform operations on top of these APIs. So the final look of this API documentation Will, will be something like this. You will see the API endpoints and a platform to play with the APIs. There are different ways you can achieve this. You can achieve this using the Symfony API platform. And But here I am going to show you using a third party library called Nelmio API doc bundle. So right away we are going to convert a basic simple full menu listing API. So that is our first goal, to convert this basic API to a documented, well-documented Rust API log. Okay, we are going to install the package now. So in order to use this Nelmio bundle, API doc bundle, you need to first install this Composer package. The package name is Nelmio API doc bundle. So I've started the installation. It will take a few seconds. As you can see, the installation for Nelmio API doc bundle is complete. During the installation, it will ask you to give you a confirmation to execute the script. So you have to press or you have to enter the Y symbol or yes to proceed the installation. The purpose the purpose is to create the necessary configurations like the Nelmio dog configurations, the uh, auto loading the bundles, and auto loading the Nelmio API dog interface YAMLs. So it's a it's a must that you need to put yes to perform these installations. Once the installation is done, you will see the following files. The first file is config packages nilmio api doc bundle. So here you will see a, you will see some configurations like documentation info, title of the documentation, and the path patterns, filtered path patterns. So I can show you how it look like, look like now. So this is our current API food menu, which is not documented. So if you go to the documentation directly, you will see you will see the new new documentation API documentation Swagger interface. You can change the name. You can change the title from here. I'm going to click food rest. Rest API. So once you do the changes in the configuration YAML, you will see it is in the documentation interface. So you can see the new name and the description. Okay, so and you can see the default our default API. Here, so if you execute it, it will show the same data that you have seen before, like your menus, breakfast, lunch, and dinner that you see directly in browser. So it's like food menu. So the same API is now documented using our Nelmio API. 
I'm going to change something on the documentation. Like I'm going to add some more parameters to clearly describe the AP, the parameters, request parameters, response parameters. So I'm going to change this function, like this menu listing function. So what I did is, I have to use this annotation. So this annotation is part of the open API. So you need to include this annotation first, open API annotation. And once that is done, you can define the annotation method OA get, and you can tell description description of this ap the description comes below the ap so you can describe your ap ap so this ap will list a number of menus for a restaurant and you can tell the open ap response to be like 200 and the description should be okay and the content type the content media type is of application json and the schema of this application that JSON is like first property is name that is of type string second property is of type description so I am going to redefine this API using another process so I don't store anything to database so I am using a simple getter and setter method for a store to add and to show menus so I'm going to include this menu store so I'm injecting this menu store so And as I said before, the response of this API is an application JSON type or the type output of this API is of type application JSON and it has two properties name which, uh, which is of type string and description which is of type string and I am grouping this API with a name called menu. You can name it as you want, as whatever name that fits your requirement so you can rename it to whatever fitting to your project so i'm just retaining a list of menus okay because this is of type menu store so, so this get menus will retain a simple hard-coded list of menus with the name and description. Now when you run your API, you can see the list of menus for a restaurant. You can see the description, you can see the schema, the schema of the output, like name is of type string, description is of type string, and you can try it out here. You can execute and you will see the two menus here. So if there is something wrong with the code, I can fix this now. So get menus should return an array. So let me fix this. So I made a mistake in the constructor function name. It should be construct. So I fix this. And now when I run it again, you can see the API respond with the name, menu name and the description. So I only have two hard coded menus. So it, it shows this. So here you will have a better better view of your ap what it accepts what it returns and the documentation you can find easily from this from this swagger interface i am going to show you one more post post method uh, on this food rest ap so i already have the code with me so but i can explain how it works i'm going to paste the code here so basically I am my plan is 
to write a post descriptor so I use the open AP post and I put a description like post a new restaurant menu and the body the body of this post is of type application JSON and it has it's a it's of type and it's a, it's of an object type and it has two properties one is the name of the restaurant menu and the other is the other is the description of the restaurant menu and it will respond a success message it, it, the response is just a success like your uh, menu is created or just give you a success boolean flag true or false and the response post response type is always two not one so this is the request body or a request body open api request body and open api response it's very simple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the symphony serializer so that i can use it to see deserialize the object to a class object json object to a class object so i am thinking like you going to use the serializer this arrow serializer equal to and I am using this serializer to deserialize the content. The content is what the content is the name of the menu and the description of the menu, which is an which is an object type, JSON object, which is a JSON object. So I am going to deserialize this JSON object to a menu video data transfer object. So I already defined this getter and setter class. It's just a getter and setter for this name and description. So it has only two fun, uh, four functions like get name, set name, get description, set description. And I am converting this JSON object to this video class. And I am just storing this menu to the existing menu list. So I am not storing to a third part uh, DB or a persistent DB storage or a session. And simply for demonstration only, I am storing this into the existing array, appending to the existing array and retaining a JSON response of do not work. So I will show the AP interface. Now we can see the post interface. So after get we will see this post. As I said before, the JSON payload, the request body has only two parameters two properties name and description we can test it from here we can test directly from here and the response is just a boolean whether it is success or failed like status status that is true or false and the response type code type is do not work. If you execute this you will you will see the same response because we are not returning anything we are just storing or appending the value to the existing array so as i said this api documentation will help you to play play with your play with your rust api endpoints and you can also share this with the front end developers so they can easily find out the type or the payload quickly they can also play with this and that is it for this video. In the next video, I will show the put and delete operation along with an API token for authentication. And thank you for watching this video. See you soon.